at Smithy TV in downtown Toronto with longtime AD and now director David Antonuk. How does it feel to have your Bravo in fact film made? Well, the 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 short film, uh, the Strange and Eerie Memoirs of Billy Weathergloom. Um, it's my first sort of fully realized short film. And it's been a long time coming. You know, when I got the Bravo Fact Award letter, it came uh, in the spring. Like, it all happened very quickly. It came in the spring, and I actually cried when I opened it because it was the first yes in 19 years of applying for things. And, you know, that being said, I've been busy working as an AD. I haven't actually applied for any money for anything in a while, but uh, it was amazing. And, I, of course, I didn't believe it because, you know, you, you assume it's going to be the usual, thank you, we've received so many submissions, and they said yes. Okay, what do I do now? Well, I guess I got to make the thing. And then the, pro the challenge, of course, was that I, I was getting married in the summer, so I was supposed to be making the film and getting married at the same time. Uh, my wife, who is amazing, um, let us shoot in the house, uh, so we shot uh, the film two weeks before we got married uh, in in our house and in the forest around our house and uh, in the school near the forest by our house, um, and it, it came together quite well. It was one of those kinds of things where. Uh, everything just gelled. We got these great kids. Uh, Jake Goodman, I worked with him uh, as an assistant director on a, a television movie years ago. Um, uh, another agent recommended uh, the little boy, Peter DeCuna, who played uh, Herschel Fishmasher. And those kids on set, uh, they had, a, had an energy to them that was so natural. And they needed very little direction because the script written by Eric Wolf, Dora nominated uh, playwright, um, was done in such a voice that it, it lent itself to just a very easy execution uh, and it was very natural for the kids. Uh, it was more, you know, the things were about blocking, like, no, no, look this way when you say it and be a little more afraid, but they, they were just great. And, you know, the experience, you know, I've already received an award for the film, an award of excellence from the best shorts competition in La Jolla, California. So to, to get an award like that for my sort of first film, uh, it, it almost doesn't seem real. Like last year, which is such a great year to make the film, get an award, get married. Uh, the marriage part is the best part. You know, my wife's not too so. um, And you know, the film is still making the festival rounds. Um, I'm still waiting to hear from 11 other festivals. I sort of, when I applied to all these festivals, I sort of kind of left a gap for some reason at this time of the year. So I'm not going to hear anything for a few months, and those festivals won't be until the spring. So uh, I mean, there's a trailer online that people can look at if they want to see the. Um, sort of uh, a trailer for the film, that's at uh, DaveWasHere.com and there'll be a link to, uh, to watch the trailer. There's also BillyWeatherGloom.com. Uh, I have a website up um, that's still sort of getting uh, formulated. Great. And how did you get together with the playwright and get this whole project going? I went to Ryerson. I graduated many years ago. Uh, and Eric was in the, uh, Eric Wolf, the, the writer, was in the theater program, in the acting program, when I was in the media arts program. And I remember at the time thinking, well, he's a great actor. And years later, I saw him doing his play, The Strange and Eerie Memoirs of Billy Weathergloom. And it was a one-man show and it had puppets. Eric has the, his, own, uh, his own voice. I, I would describe him as Canada's answer to uh, Joss Whedon, but I'd say he's better uh, in, in many respects. But so he had this one-man show, The Strange and Eerie Memoirs of Billy Weathergloom. And it's this coming-of-age story about this kid and his weird friendship with this other weird kid and sort of the things that they go through uh, on on the road towards uh, getting you know surviving adolescence, and uh, I saw this plan. I said this would make an amazing movie, and he said I'm not ready to make this one yet. So he, he's actually written a number of scripts for me in a sort of horror kind of genre, um, and then I said you know I want to apply for uh, I want to apply for Billy Weatherloom for for the Bravo fact, and he said sure go ahead, and then we got it. So. Uh, you know, Eric is someone I hope to work with on many projects. We have a number of things that we're working on right now. Um, we have a feature version of this of, of Billy Weatherbloom that we'd like to do. Uh, we have an idea for a TV series, um, and we have these other horror scripts that uh, that he's penned that we'd like to get off the ground. So he he's a really good collaborator. Like when we worked on set, we worked together as a as a unit uh, in the sense that I'm a strong believer in the script. Um, you know, I've worked with a lot of directors as an AD that just show up and they're constantly going like this and they're, they're thinking about shots, but they seem to forget what's, what's on the page and what we're trying to accomplish and what story we're trying to tell in their quest to get shots. And shots can tell the story, but sometimes it's people speaking the text and, you know, sometimes it's a variety of things. But uh, Eric's words have a resonance to them. Um, 
they're poignant um, and they're funny and they're sad and they're scary and to have him as a voice there, I think, are we getting this moment? You know, uh, it was great to have him mm -hmm. there when we shot it. And what is your directorial style like? Um, I would say that I I search for the truth in the scene. Um, you know, every scene is about something, every shot is about something, and they all need to dovetail back to one another. Um, and what is the point that I'm trying to get across from the piece as a whole, and how does that individual uh, section of the of, of the script sort of, you know, tell that story? Um, so I'm constantly trying to, you know, I have a background in semiotics and image theory. Um, so the, the images in there are supposed to mean something. They shouldn't be there just because. You know, the original script is actually set in the 80s. And, you know, unfortunately on our budget we couldn't pull off the 80s. But the idea was, for example, uh, in, in the movie, you know, they're, they're haunted by this demon which they capture in, in a bucket. And, uh, you know, the demon is a representation of a child's view of sexuality. So he's, just, he's afraid of it. And it you know, and when they captured the demon in the bucket, they put a magazine on top of the bucket. Well, in the in the original play, it's the it's the Eaton's catalog, mm -hmm. because the Eaton's catalog lingerie section is the first place where a person who grew up in the '80s probably saw a scantily clad woman, mm -hmm. unless they had an older brother or father who bought you know Playboy magazine or something. So that you know that semiotic image would have a really resonant theme, and a lot of people would get that instantly. A lot of guys would get that. Now, unfortunately, on our budget level, I couldn't clear the Eaton's catalog, etc. But if we make a feature version, I would try and do that. Absolutely. Yeah. And where's the best place to find out more information on you and on the film online? DaveWasHere.com. Um, if you go to that link, there'll, uh, there'll be uh, a link to the trailer and tell you what festival it's showing at next. When we actually get an air date from Bravo, Bravo's been generous with us in the sense that they're not going to show it for a year, so it'll get to make the rounds. Uh, of the festivals before uh, they show it. Uh, so there'll be links there at DaveWasHere.com. There's also a BillyWeatherbloom.com. That's kind of probably hard for people to spell. So uh, there's a Facebook page as well under my name, David Antony. Um I think people will probably have a time finding that one as well. But. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank and you. I look forward to hopefully seeing the feature version soon. So do I. Thank, thank you. you very much. I'm Katie Ullman reporting for Katie Chats here at Smithy TV in downtown Toronto.